Hey everybody, we're here today in Albuquerque at the CENTCOM. Central Communications, or CENTCOM for mm -hmm. short. Dispatch Center for the New Mexico State Police. I am here today with, I know you've been waiting for this a long time, <laughs> Angelina. Yes, I'm Angelina. I work here in the Albuquerque office, but we cover the majority of the state. And I dispatch, I've been here about three years now, and I love my job. And I can speak from experience. I worked with Angelina for a long time over the radio. I've never actually met her until today, but she's an awesome dispatcher. I can tell you that. So let's get started. When you get here in the morning, you have to log everything in, log into the CAD. What does CAD stand for? It is Computer Aided Dispatch. And these two what are going to be your 911 screens up here. And when a call comes in, this is where you get the information. it will have the name, the phone number, and then this will be where they ping. Where does that information come from? Um, off of the towers. Okay. That so does that one. does that work like does that work on cell phones and landlines? So if somebody calls nine one one on a cell phone and they mm -hmm. transfer it to you, it rings here as a nine one one, right? Correct. And all their information is going to be there. Yes. So when you say ping over here on this map, what was that? Uh, yeah, so it's going to say they're right here in Santa Fe. We'll zoom in and tell us, you know, that they're 925 at the 272 um, mile marker yeah. or something to that effect. And does does it make like a special sound to tell you like, okay, you got a 911 now? Uh, it rings really loud in here. So in addition to the 911 calls, you guys take just normal, like say somebody's going to call the state police for whatever, it rings here at your yes, desk. Yes, it rings on this one. And is that just the Albuquerque number, or can you? No, that's it. Um, all numbers yeah, ring, that come into the and whoever's available will pick up the phone and. Correct. Yes, yeah, so we have uh, answered within three rings. And these are all of our officers that we have on in this office right now. Okay. Which is 85 of them. So 85 people you're keeping track of right now. Yes, out of just this office. Just the dispatch, or just the District Five Albuquerque office. Uh, no, this is the whole. All oh, okay. Center. Four means in everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, but. Albuquerque has 60 people, right? Or okay. 60 officers to take and, care of right now. And from here, you can tell where they're at, what they're Their doing. Their GPS is on right here. So it maps them. Oh, and you can see the little units. So I can tell that this unit is on, let's see where he's at. He is on Wyoming. And let me just find a crash in Academy. So if that officer gets in trouble, something's going on, he can't radio, you guys already know where he's at. Yes. So you can send units over there to him. Correct. And this is your screen to take a call on. What's that screen? This screen is just, uh, this little box is to take a call on. Oh, uh, so somebody calls right now. Mm -hmm. You start typing in there about what's going on. When I was an officer in the street, like it would pop up on your CAD, like priority one, priority two, whatever that. Who determines those priorities? Um, so the CAD will actually do it for us, depending on the call type. Mm -hmm. But if for any reason we need to change that, we can also manually do that in here. Say somebody calls 911, mm -hmm. who does it go to? So it's originally going to go to the hey, Monica, which game of you have primary that? agency in the area. So say we're in Albuquerque, we call 911. And APD will originally get that call. Okay, so how do you guys receive 911 uh, If call? it needs to be transferred to us, they transfer it. <laughs> Dude, you got a lot of screens going on here. I know. I don't even know how you keep up with all of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this top one to your far right will be all your radios. Okay. So those are like the different radio channels yeah, and so different this will frequencies? Be each district. So this will be all of D5, every single one of these radios is for your Albuquerque district. And then you have your Farmington district radio, Gallup. Yeah, can you talk to anyone in the state from up there? Um, we only have what our district is. 5, 10. Oh, so all the, all the districts that come out of this office, exactly. you can, everybody at every console can talk to. Yes. But, like you're all assigned to a specific district. Like your D5, this is the D5 one? Exactly. So Albuquerque? Yes. So you mainly deal with Albuquerque, but if something were to come up in Farmington and the other Farmington dispatcher's busy or whatever, yes. you can like jump on board and just get involved. You can be clicked onto more than one okay. at a time. Yeah. Northbound 925 at 212, Northbound 925 at 212. It's going to be a white cargo van, busted out right window with a black trash bag. Just to a whiteboard, negative 29. Drunk Busters. What is Drunk Busters? Drunk Busters is a hotline um, that you can dial from any cell phone, mm -hmm. pound DWI, mm -hmm. and it is to try to eliminate DWI. So when you dial, when I dial pound DWI, where does it go? Uh, so it rings here, 
mm -hmm. directly to anybody. Uh, yeah, all depending the on who's. Mm -hmm. And it has like a different ring, like oh, the tone. Okay. So we know that's what's coming in. Mm -hmm. And we take the location, um, the vehicle description of what the vehicle is doing, mm -hmm. and then we put it in our units are notified of it mm -hmm. and surrounding agencies as well. What happens when a caller calls and they speak a language that you don't speak? Well, how, um, how, does, how do you guys handle that? So we see if there's anybody here in the office that could speak that language. Mm -hmm. If not, then we have a language line that we have to connect to. So it's like a three-way call. Okay, so they'll... How, and like when you call that line, do you like have to select a specific language? Yes. Or? And then if we don't know the language, there's an option to say, I don't know the language. Oh, okay. Speaking. And will they like talk to the person and like figure out what? Yes. What, what language, language do they speak? Yeah. So then they become basically like just an interpreter. Correct. Um, and you just talk normally. What do you like most about your job? Um, that it's different every day. Like what you do is routine, but every call is different for the most part. Which district <laughs> do you guys cover out of this? Centcom. So we that's one or I'm sorry, so that's nine. Gallup. Uh, oh, Tucum Carry. Mm -hmm. Santa Fe. Santa Fe. Albuquerque. Albuquerque. Farmington. Gallup. Socorro. Dang. Yes. And then where are the other there's three dispatch centers or Correct. so the so other one's in Las have, Cruces, right? Yeah, so Las Cruces covers And they cover all of this. This one. And this is the SOCOM one. Okay. And then Norcom covers seven inches. And they're out of Vegas. Uh, Vegas. Correct. So how come you guys got like all of them and then these other people just have like two? Um, Are you guys just that much better? <laughs> we're more staffed, highly staffed. <laughs> okay. Yes. Right. Our warrant room. Oh, the warrants. That's, yeah. oh, that's a good question. So I pull over a guy, he has a warrant, mm -hmm. run his DL. You say he's got a warrant. Yep. Now what? Um, so if it's out of our agency, mm -hmm. we come and pull it out of here. So it's all alphabetized. And these are all warrants. So right? these are warrants just out of our agency though, right? Correct. It's a lot of them. Yeah. And is it for the entire state police? No, this is just for our office. Just, and when you say our office, you're talking about D5, uh, D10. Everywhere except who can carry that. This is for the front door. This is a security measure, so oh, okay. we don't have to go out. And, and that's like a door. video phone? Yeah, so we can see people. Um, sorry. This is for the governor. Yes, Governor. And then you guys have surveillance cameras. <laughs> this is over here. This is Santa Fe. That is Santa Fe. Well, you guys used to watch me do my reports. We did. You can zoom in to the squad room, and my supervisor will explain to you guys what the hiring process is and what it takes to be here. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> the camera is always on, just so you guys know. All right, guys, I'm here with Karen Gill. She is the regional manager of, I guess, of what? For Central Communications, or CENCOM for mm -hmm. short, and we dispatch for um, D1, D5, D6, D10, D11, and temporarily D9. So mm -hmm. we have the most districts here. And because we are in the, the area that we're in and here in Albuquerque, we are full staffed. So we usually have a bigger hiring pool usually mm -hmm. to choose from, and we've had a pretty good um, success with employee retention. Our biggest vacancy rate though right now is in our Las Vegas and our um, Las Cruces offices. And so that's where we're really trying to hire the most number of is, people for. Is that because it's smaller, smaller areas, less exactly people applying right exactly less people applying um just smaller areas just a smaller hiring pool mm -hmm. for the most part is, is, yeah. is the issues that we we see okay what are you guys looking for like when you you put your application or your job posting out what are you, what are you looking for what qualification they're very very simple they're um 18 years old a high school diploma ged no felonies no um I think no dwi convictions in fifth or five years i mm -hmm. believe is what it is um, and once they get hired you guys put them through a like a three week academy, right? If you make it through the whole process, you do have to hire. You have to type thirty five words a minute. Mm -hmm. um, you also have to take a online test that we do through the Department of Workforce Solutions. And once you pass all of that, and then we bring you on board, um, then you're going to go through a twelve to sixteen week training program uh, mm -hmm. that's on the job. And mm -hmm. sometime within your first year of employment, then you'll go to the police academy or the dispatch academy, which is in Santa Fe at the law enforcement academy. So that's kind of like FTO for us officers like when we're riding along with another officer. Exactly. That kind of happens before the academy for you guys. Exactly, we do it so completely in reverse, exactly. So you gotta see if you're even gonna be able to do the job. 
right before we send you to the academy exactly and so when you're up at the academy it's really more of just a reinforcement <laughs> of training yeah okay. so when you go up yeah when you go up to the academy it's really just a reinforcement of the training that you yeah. have and for the most most people go almost towards the end of their year so mm -hmm. we're pretty confident that they're gonna they're already working and released and working successfully as a dispatcher so this just kind of gives them the the average lifespan of a dispatcher is about three years really yeah yeah uh, that's the, uh, the national average actually mm -hmm. and so 911 dispatching in general nationwide and, and emergency communication dispatching nationwide has a very high turnover rate and a lot of it's because of just the nature of the job that we do and right. the intense work that we do and the calls and the radio and all of that people that really can make it that far mm -hmm. it's because you love it it's right. because you're doing something that you really realize that you're giving something back to the community and that you're really um, doing something greater than yourself and mm -hmm. I think when people get into this line of work I think that's why people get into any kind of public service mm -hmm. because they want to do something right for their, for their community yeah say we have someone that wants to apply what can they expect what do they need to do where do they go to apply uh, to apply for this position they mm -hmm. need to go just to the state personnel website which I don't know off the top of my head but I'm sure it's on yeah. NMSPO. We'll, we'll put it right yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, we'll put it right here. Right here. <laughs> they need to go to the uh, state personnel office website, um, look for a dispatcher one or a dispatcher two position. We use, When we post for an open vacancy, we hire, we, we post for both. A dispatcher mm -hmm. one is somebody that has never been certified in the state of New Mexico. A dispatcher two is somebody that already currently has a dispatcher certification from the, from the law enforcement academy. Mm -hmm. And that can be from any agency in New Mexico. Um, out of state certifications do not count towards that. Hmm. So they would have to apply for the dispatcher one position. So. What are you looking for as far as staffing? How many people at each center? It's kind of dependent. Well, it's, it's very dependent on how many districts we have here. We have six districts, but um, our Albuquerque office has two radio frequencies that we have to monitor. So we, um, our minimum is six, but we try to maintain a staffing level of seven dispatchers at all times. Um, we have a supervisor on most days. Um, and then we also have the Drunk Buster program here in, mm -hmm. our, in the Albuquerque office as well. So we usually have a Drunk Buster. So seven plus a Drunk Buster and plus a supervisor? supervisor yes, exactly. So okay. a lot of people in there. Yeah. It gets a little crowded. So, so about how long does the hiring process um, take? So I believe I applied about four times before I even heard back. Um, so you kept applying, there was no vacancies? Correct. Um, I just, oh, I kept applying and then um, I heard back and it was roughly three to four months by the time I interviewed to the time I got really? hired mm -hmm. so don't be discouraged so now you've applied you're hired what kind of benefits are you looking at so we have um, health insurance medical dental um, para which is good and all of that that you work with some incredibly dedicated people you're doing something that like I said earlier is so much bigger than yourself and it's something that, and I think people that are drawn to this line of work want to give back to their communities and this job gives you an opportunity to do that in just a, a different way I mean you can go home and you really know that you, you could have saved somebody's life today whether right. it was on the phone or just by sending somebody quickly or and it's so so rewarding and it's not and that that part is so rewarding but there are other things about this job the excitement getting to know mm -hmm. what's going on in your community you have to find something to love about this job I and mean, I've done it for over 20 years now and it's um, it is something that just gets in your skin and it's just something that it, it's you love so thank you Karen for You're taking welcome. the time to talk to us we yeah, appreciate it Bye. So we'll see you it. soon. <laughs> to the State Police Communications Bureau, thank you for what you do. You're appreciated. You're the lifeline for the patrol officers out there in the field and for people in need. So again, I appreciate what you do and so do the officers. And thank you again for your commitment to the state of New Mexico. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for all you do and we appreciate it. Thank you dispatchers for everything you do. From our radio to yours. Thank you for what you do. Thank you, Dispatch. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Muchas gracias. From District 8 to the Southcom Dispatch staff. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Dispatch. Thanks, Dispatchers. <laughs>